ladies and gents and thank you for watching ASFN Fishing. Now today I'm going to show you that bait I referred to when I showed you guys how to make this dangle and this general best go to summer summer trace when you're fishing for both edibles and smaller sharks um, could be in the area that it sharks won't bite you off but a cob won't spit this trace so have a look at that it's in the link below and also how to make this dangle and it's in the link below now i'm going to show you quickly a chocka trace inspired by and uh linton premlaw showed me a couple of moves on this trace which makes a lot of sense to me and i think it's a great thing to share with all of you guys just on our coastline it makes a big difference all right now this is just a plain chocker trace but i'll show you guys how to alternate a little bit when you're targeting cob gray sharks or hammerheads this is a great go-to bait all right firstly you've got that movement of this oversized uh, styrene dangle that you've shaped you'll see in the video if you watch it and uh, into a little rugby ball size Okay, that gives you extreme buoyancy and that will make this bait move around in that water and draw the attention of anything that's close to it you'll catch a lot of uh, it's a great uh, great little full flat fish moving on the bottom remember the eyes are on top they will see that movement and they will try to get it into their mouth gray sharks moving just above the bottom we always get our baits up so you get a uh, um, not just above the bottom but they're not moving on the bottom they're moving off the bottom so we get our baits as high up for them and the same with the hammerheads to to actually get a good bite the same with cob you guys all know if you can get your bait up and give it movement it really inspires cob to bite better all right so let's start with a piece of chocker which i've already used for a bait it's the leftover piece which will work just fine for this particular demo. We're going to rip the skin off. Okay, take the head out. I'm just going to leave it in the bait box here for now. Cartridge out. Just rinse it a bit. And there we go. All right. Got that piece of chocker All right. that's what's left of the ink sack not a lot of ink in this particular chocker oh here it is sorry I missed it here's the ink sack okay now that's another subject another bait um, especially for eagle rays duckles and stuff like that we use that ink sack and you beat it into the chocker all right now first you want to get a bit of a tentacle bait to create movement. Now right here where the cartridge sit, you've got that harder piece of chocker, alright? That's an ideal piece to use to create tentacles. Because it doesn't beat very nicely when you want to beat it. It's a bit tougher than the rest of the body. So you can just cut that the length and shape you want it to be for the movement you want to create. Now those tentacles serve two purposes. It creates that movement on your bait, which draws the attention of any fish close in the area. It can provoke a reaction bite. Right, a fish that just suddenly sees the movement and he shoots, he doesn't even worry about the shape or the smell or anything, he just shoots and hits that bait because he saw the movement. That is what, what tentacles and movement does to your bait, especially in cleaner water. Secondly, when there's pickers around, they'll first hit these little tentacles before they start picking away at your bait. Now this bait particularly is kind of a picker proof bait. And I'll explain why. You've got this very nice little bait. You need it to lie a bit longer to get a proper bite on a, on a gray shark or, a, or, or a, a hammerhead or a cob. And the pickers start hitting away at it, already taking the shape and the effectiveness of your bait away. Now I like pickers hitting my bait but there's a couple of tricks that I'll show you guys on this that will assist you with that because when they hit your bait it gets more smell into the water it gets more movement into the water they can see this action and I experimented I did in the past where underwater looking at how fish will approach bait or something that's that's a freebie for them in the water they'll leave the small fish hitting it first and when they see no it's safe enough they'll push through bully everything out of the way and they'll hit it I've seen that several times over so you want the pickers to eat your bait, but you don't want them to take off your bait that you don't stand a chance of still getting a good bite. Now we all use latex cotton. 
all right for all our baits because it ties a very very neat bait but on this particular bait I'm going to use ghost cotton as well the old-fashioned ghost cotton all right now first things first I just want to get my tentacle on and the reason I beat it is so that the cotton holds it better onto my foam there and very simple just tie the tentacles to the top this will sit in the water like this so the tentacles will hang down all right that makes it better for casting it depends on what you want you can add tentacles shorter ones to the top to create that movement that they fall over and they really start creating that movement that on the sides of this bait there's movement that the fish can notice and it just makes it more, look more alive if you want a reaction bite all right so starting off with your ghost cotton the reason we do that is you want the last layers of your bait to stay with with your latex cotton if something with teeth like smaller shad or some of these sand soldiers we've got on our coastline or any of those pickers come and hit that latex cotton they break that cotton everything starts jumping off your bait comes off your hook so your first layers of bait they don't get that right with with ghost cotton as easily so your first couple of layers of bait you tie with ghost cotton and then your last couple of layers for the visual side of things you use latex so when the pickers hit the outside layers those couple of uh, layers you've got will come off it will create that extra mayhem in the water because the small ones will take off with it it will be uh, hit from every direction in the water it will create that extra flavor in the water but your main bait here is still sitting and the pickers will will still try on this bait they'll notice they can't get it off and they'll spend their time um, hitting the pieces that came off already okay from Linton thanks Linton very logical approach and uh, sometimes make big differences in anglers results by just doing small things like that all right now the idea is this is a diamond type shape bait but it's more little round discs we're going to cut a couple so we can start layering them and remember when you hit them now they're going to go bigger so you want to cut them slightly smaller than your actual dangle so that when you hit them they're not too big and they make a sloppy ugly bait and at this stage you know doing this they don't have to be too neat we're gonna beat them all right good idea now uh, I'm gonna quickly chop these up with a chocker hammer all right another thing about chocker hammers you'll see some of them have got sharper points on the one edge and then flattened points on the other side if they don't you take the one side you hit it on the rocks until it goes a bit flat that mushes up a chocker bait much better than the sharp ones that it'll just cut through the tough part now when we beat chocker we put the tough side the skin side to the top so that the softer side starts mushing open it just creates more flavor and it's still a stronger bait than if you have to puncture it with sharp points Alright guys, now you've beaten a couple of pieces. The whole idea now is my first layer is to form a decent bait already. It's still with the ghost cotton. Tie that with the ghost. Which makes it a tough bait. Now you guys will notice in South Africa, mainly rugby ball baits. We see it all the time. Uh, I suppose it's because we're such a rugby country. But this shape of bait is extremely popular. Fits nicely into the mouth, the fish can size it up and uh, getting great results on them all around. Now another thing, if there's a, a gray, gray shark smash, for instance, you've got a better chance your bait after catching a gray shark, your bait will be still fairly okay to just cast it as quick as possible again. Where with the latex, good chance your bait's coming off your hook already. 
Now this is your base bait. So I want to put additional cotton. Make sure this is nice and strong. Okay. Then your last layers. Now you start layering it. You can still use ghost cotton guys. We'll just make it in general and just take say for instance your last piece you're gonna use. Use the latex cotton. And obviously the mush side, the softer side, you're tying to the outside now. So one thing you must be careful of with this bait is not to go over your ring for casting, secure it more to the top. Now that styrofoam dangle I'm using in the bottom, quite easily you can push in a couple of uh, rattles, the kingfisher rattles for the cob, and it will do no harm using them for hammers or any of those fish as well to provoke that quicker extra bite. I prefer securing my bait here in the bottom so it doesn't go over that bead. So just to the top of the bead you secure it onto your corded braid, the Dacron, so that your sinker definitely unclips easier. And you can make this ring a bit bigger if you want as well to make sure. Alright guys, so that's pretty much the bait. And that works for everything. A very nice little rugby ball bait. Chocker bait and it's sitting in the air like this, floating around, doing its thing. Clips now, it throws a mile because your sinker sits, it's nice and streamlined. Your sinker sits at the bottom of this. And you can really cast this a mile. Okay, there we go. Very nice little bait. Like I said, credit to Linton. For that we used to just cut one long piece of chocker long, mash it up and turn it around this bait. Alright, now that's also fine, it works very well, a lot of guys do it for cob. But when there's pickers around now, they're going to take off layer by layer, which will make your bait last a bit longer. Alright, that's the whole purpose of this bait. And then, of course, when fishing for grey sharks, any of the species I mentioned with this bait, if you now take... Just a small slither of red eye because as you know if you fish for, for grey sharks you'll know this and even for hammers sometimes by adding just this it will give you better results than the guys next to you you just add a small slither onto the side here as small as that and it can make a big difference you can put a piece of sardine or a piece of red eye and you just tie that on same principle with the pickers it creates that smell in the water it disperses it creates a bit of a cloud as well around the bait and uh, it's got that little belly shine it's got that fishy flavor instead of the choco flavor and it can make a big difference for you getting more bites than the guy next to you so if you're fishing the choco bait and you're getting the results every cast is a bite then no need to change but if you start seeing that you're getting less bites than someone else Add a bit of mackerel, add a bit of red eye, or add a bit of anything uh, that you've got in your box and try and experiment, guys. That can sometimes give you more bites than, uh, than the, the rest of the guys on the beach. So, that brings us to the end of that one. Thank you for watching. And uh, let us know if any of these baits or methods or traces that we show you guys actually get you results. Um, send us the catches into Grindy Elite at asfn.co.za and remember to subscribe to our channel. There's something I want to say, some of the older generations, please don't take offense. But um, when you can't subscribe, it's because you don't have a Google account yet. All right, because we're getting a lot of views with people, regular views, that's not subscribed. And that sometimes happens when you don't have a Google account, it doesn't allow you to subscribe. So if, does, if the channel doesn't allow you to subscribe, just create a Google email account, which is free and then you can subscribe to these channels which allows you to push that notification button and get regular updates on every video we upload 
Also remember to like the videos, that helps us to, to promote the channel and grow. And that way we can bring you guys a lot more content, tips and tricks and methods that can get you better results. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.